make the move. Whoa, whoa. And one. No way. And technical. One. Technical. That's technical. True. technical. Yeah, Let's go. Play, play, play by the rules. Oh. All right. Starts the line. Mm -hmm. Zip for eight tonight. With a little help from his friends. Make whoa. that nine for nine, Marv. <laughs> Uncle Mike, it's a crime. A guy with a shell like that's not an all star. Uh huh. huh. You are raising a heck of a sixth man here, Caitlin. Sixth man? I kicked your butt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thanks for watching. No problem. Nice shot. Val told me about a job. Caitlin. Michael, it's my life, and it's time I get on with it. Right? Where is it? Tennessee's. On Roosevelt. Yeah, it's a nice place, Michael, so don't start okay. with me. Okay. All right, doesn't this two guard Need to get the home room. Two guard, you Two mean guard. point guard. You mean point guard. Keep going. Come on, Danny. All right. This will be good for me. You'll I, see. We'll see. Right. Have a good day, guys. See you, Uncle Mike. It's not exactly the end we had planned, but all's well. Sounds like you're satisfied. I tracked Von Wagner for eight years. Would I have liked to see the trial? Of course. But I'll tell you one thing. He strings himself up. The world is a far better place. Well, there is an excellent chance that this wasn't a suicide, Agent Becker. You say tomato. We say suicide. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Not my department. Ooh, I thought you were smug, John. Let me guess. The FBI has cleared its books on the bombings. Well, the prime suspect's dad is more cost efficient. Van Wagner was depressed and humiliated. You know, maybe he just couldn't stand to face the inevitable media circus. Sure. He hung himself without leaving prints on a belt he shouldn't have had in the first place. I know I believe that. It's psych 101. Paranoids don't commit suicide. I just, I think it's time to face the obvious. With Van Wagner out of the way, it ties us up in a neat little package. Okay, do you think we're maybe getting just a little carried away here? Okay, John, explain the bomb sent while Van Wagner was hospitalized. That's what I thought. Look, if someone was smart enough to kill Warren Boyd and then frame Von Wagner for it, I think he'd be smart enough to put the proper postage on his mail bomb. We, um... We need to look deeper into the Boyd brothers, and we need to understand what Willie Boyd found in that leisure. And more importantly, why was Van Wagner killed, and who's behind it? And the number one choice for killing Van Wagner? Tommy Ritigliano transferred down from Danbury, pending some kind of motion. A birdie saw him lingering outside the shower room, day in question. What do we know about him? But his names end in vowels. And I'm not talking Shapiro. <laughs> you want company? I'm good. You need something, Holla. I could kill for a cup of coffee, doesn't hurt when I piss. Is that right? Figure of speech. Jeez, loosen up, will you? My zipper down what? I'm gonna stay right here. There's a double bill at the Midway. Midway hasn't played double bills in a long time, I hear. Yeah? Well, if you hadn't noticed, I've been out of town a while. And why is that, Mr. Ritigliano? Well, what is this? Meet the press. Call me Tommy Cap on account of my pension for cappuccinos. Tell me about Roy Van Wagner, Tommy. Who? You know what? Government pays me whether I come up with something or not. Sitting here, sure beats the hell out of sweating for that paycheck. Serial nut jobs all I know. Bill has you whacking him. 
Kind of gives me juice, huh? You cop into it? Why would I do that? Look, unless my lawyer's got some kind of magic rabbit coming out of the hat, I got 15 years in there. I want to keep breathing. I need all the juice I can get. You gave me your word. I trusted you. The it cut me. We're investigating your brother's death, Mrs. Payton. We will solve this. Roy is dead because of me. I gave you his name. Why am I even talking to you? If somebody killed Roy, we're going to find them. You'll understand if I don't believe you, Mr. Hayes. One time when we were kids, there were some bullies in the playground, and they were teasing me and calling me names, and Roy came running after them with a baseball bat. They beat him black and blue. And you know what he said to me afterwards? He said, it's OK, Rosie. I'll never let anybody hurt you, Rosie. How could I do this to him? If you could provide some names of friends or people that he mentioned. George Washington, Fred Nietzsche. He was ill, Mr. Hayes. Now you will forgive me, but I have a funeral to arrange. So, what's new at the big house? Tommy Ricigliano. Tommy Cap. I wonder what some mob muscle was doing soaking it up with the Mad Bomber. Let's find out. Mr. Benero's eating at the moment. No, no, it's okay, Frankie, old friend. Mm hmm. Hey, Michael. Hey, John. Sit. You hungry? Eat. No, thanks. Yeah, right. Son of a gun's been overcooking his pasta for years. Ought to be a law. <laughs> Tell me about Tommy Cap. He's a criminal. A criminal who grew up in your back pocket. <laughs> you never know about the people who work for you, do you, Michael? Well, what I do know is that Tommy Cap wouldn't pick his nose without checking with you first. Well, I'm meeting here. John. If I find out you're connected to this, I'm going to come back here. I do not know what you're talking Roy about. Ben Wagner. Sorry, delivery kid's been sick. Consequently, I haven't read my paper the last few days. But I'll tell you this, Michael. If Tommy Cap's involved with some sort of crap with this Van Gogh character, it's because he's got more linguine in his skinny head than brains. Okay. OK, so you have nothing to do with this. Hey. But I lie to you. You know? Hi. Oh. Draft. TNT. Baccarat. Tango at Nick. Scotch. If nothing, I'll take scotch. <laughs> That's nice. And you want some peanuts? Fortunately, the quack who calls himself a doctor says me and the devil cholesterol don't see eye to eye. Look at you change. Why don't you keep it, Caitlin? Caitlin Hayes, right? Brand new waitress and sister-in-law of our very own U.S. attorney, Michael. Do I know you? Mother of the best jump shot in the outer boroughs. How do you want? At the moment, nothing. Tomorrow morning, however, I'd like to speak with Michael, say, 7 a.m. at this address. You know, there's a payphone next to the men's room. Funny thing, though. As luck would have it, I'm clean out of change. get a name. I remember something like that, Michael. He knew everything about me, that, that I just started at the bar. You think one of the other waitresses talked to him? About Danny? 
Nobody at the bar knows that I have a son, Michael, and they sure as hell don't know that my brother-in-law is a U.S. attorney. Okay, that's true. Now, it's important to remember this is about me and not you, Kate. That is not comforting. Okay, okay. Listen, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. Um, <clears throat> what did he look like? I don't know. Um, uh, you know, geez, like anybody. But he talked funny. Funny how? Like, what the hell's he doing in a bar like that? Like... You know, he should be on public television talking about Greek poets or something. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna go and talk to him. You really gonna go there? Yeah, let's find out what he wants. We'll find out what he wants. And if you hear from him again, you call me immediately. Okay? And hang in there. Okay. All right? Thanks. Thank you for coming, Mr. Hayes. Think it'll rain? Who are you? A friend of a friend. Makes us friends once removed, I suppose. Why am I here? I come out here to smoke. Only place the wife's spies won't nab me. Right. Should you care about my marital woes? Roy Van Wagner, ring a bell? You know why he's dead? I know you should let him rest in peace. Let's go to my office. We and talk leave about it. here. I doubt you'll ever see me again. As I said, Mr. Hayes, I'm here as a friend. I don't want to see you get hurt. Your family? Here's a hint about my family. If you ever come close to them again, you will cease to exist. Did you hear me? Wake up. It's not me you should worry about. If you step on enough toes, you're bound to get a foot in the face. Sounds like a fortune cookie. I can lock you up right now. Sure you can, but then you'd know nothing more than you know now. And I'd wind up like old Roy, which, believe me, would be the least of my worries. These are very serious people, Mr. Hayes. They can get to anyone. By threat, by seduction. Well, sometimes they get to you, you don't even know it. I.E. Van Wagner. Exactly. Poor slob couldn't even light a match that got the world convinced he's a serial bomber. Don't think you're immune, Michael. Can I call you Michael? No. Do yourself a solid. This Van Wagner business, let it go. And if I don't? Expect a lot more rainy days. Michael, Jenny Preston is here to see you. She says she's Willie Boyd's girlfriend. Send her in. Uh, Miss Preston? They have been in my home. They have been in my home. What happened? Someone broke into my apartment. Did they take anything? It just went through my desk. God, if I knew what they wanted, I would give it to them. Who is they? How the hell should I know? Whoever killed Willie and Warren? Well, we haven't proven that those two deaths are related yeah, yet. That nut job Van Wagner. This isn't a coincidence. The ledgers that Willie took from the bank. Did you find anything? Not yet. It is in there. It has got to be in there. It is why Warren got blown up. It is why Willie... Willie found something about Barkley Brothers. Isn't it obvious they'll kill to keep it quiet? Does that mean anything to you? That's a postcard Willie sent Warren while you two were in Hawaii. Is this important? I don't know yet. Do you have a relative you could stay with out of town? Oh, yeah. And get them killed, too. I'm staying with Martha, Warren's wife. She has the doorman. So I can reach you there if anything comes up? Yeah. Thanks. Woo! Don't you just love it when two pieces of the puzzle come together nice and easy? What pieces? 
Okay, Tommy Cap, the goon in Sing Sing who more likely than not whacked Van Wagner. Mm -hmm. Guess who represented him at his extortion trial? Who? Maddie Wyman. Same Maddie Wyman who helped Van Wagner get out of the nut house. Same Maddie Wyman who represents John Bonero, head of the family. So one of Maddie Wyman's clients kills another. Is that a coincidence? I'm thinking a lawyer knows why. It's no secret. I've represented John Bernero for years. A friend of his stubs his toe, I get a call. It shouldn't be front page. No. But when one of your clients kills another... Has Tommy Cap been charged with anything new? You tell us. Okay, Michael. You got me. I confess. Four years ago, I got Roy Van Wagner out of a mental institution so I could have him framed for the murder of Willie Boyd. Then I had him whacked in a prison toilet by a petty punk whose case I sabotaged just so I could cover my tracks. <laughs> I'm good, Michael. Hell, I'm the best. But nobody's that good. That Maddie Wyman, she's dancing as fast as she can. She said Willie. What? She said Ben Wagner was framed for Willie Boyd's murder. Slip with the tongue, she made warm. No. How did she know he had a brother? Well, I guess I'm kind of confused because I thought that you caught the man who sent the bomb. Well, we may have been wrong about that. But the FBI agent Becker, tell him, Marty. Miss Preston. Miss Preston is Willie Boyd's girlfriend. She was with him in Hawaii when he had his accident. Accident? Yeah. Right. Oh, stop it, Jenny. Where are we going to hide, Marty? You tell me where we'll be safe and I'll shut up. We thought they were crazy. Warren and Willie. Joke's on us. Do you think they were into something criminal? <laughs> you could say that. Willie ran for Congress. No, that was four years ago, honey. We don't know that that had any... What else could it be? He never got past the primary. We all told him it was a waste of time to run against Holdsworth, but why would Willie listen to us? Or Warren, for that matter. Warren ran his campaign. Polls closed at 7. At 7.15, all three local news stations predicted Willie lost. Big surprise, right? But what Willie couldn't get out of his head was that they also predicted the voter count to within 320 votes of an eventual count of 90,000-something. All three stations... He should have let it go. Are you suggesting that someone fix that election? No, but, you know, you couldn't tell Willie that. I'm curious why you didn't mention this the first time we spoke. Who in their right mind would connect two murders to a dinky primary Willie had no chance in hell of winning anyway? Sounds like you're ready to reconsider now, though. Tell them, Marty. Tell them. Warren told me that Willie had found something. He could prove some sort of fix was in. I didn't pay any attention until Jenny told me about the car crash. Did Willie ever mention what it was he uncovered? I listened to him babble for four years. I didn't want to hear anymore. <laughs> Maybe I should have paid attention now. Robert Holdsworth has held a seat in the 20th Congressional District since 1982. The last three elections he ran unopposed. Doesn't sound like a primary that needed fixing. Meaning? Well, Martha Boyd lost her husband. Ginny lost her lover. Maybe they're looking for a reason. Is there something you're not telling us, Michael? Someone's on the phone, Michael. Who is it? <sighs> Won't give a name. Said to tell you Panopticon. Whatever that means. Mine, too. Let me catch up with you ladies, okay? Yeah. Okay. That's it. More, more, more. Come on. Did you make a positive ID? That dime was brought up her bag. We got all kinds of ID. Virginia Preston. Girl goes in for a swim, ends up in the trunk of a Buick. Where are we going to hide, Marty? Don't you see I am next? Emmy thinks she's been under about an hour. When you get his report, I want to see it ASAP. You got it.
See what happens when you don't listen? There he is. I didn't get a name on you. You can call me Orwell. That's cute. That's cute. Is this you? If it is, what are you going to do? Arrest me? Tell me about Panopticon. It's a circular prison. No. Tell me what it really is. <laughs> Sorry, you've got to earn that. If you insist on pursuing Humor me. me. It's my nature. Said the lemming to the grasshopper. You don't want to know. I increasingly think you don't have the brain. <laughs> now, I'm getting pissed off. If you know something, I want you to tell me right now. Consequences? Not what's That's coming. right. Well, let me up. <laughs> Salt. As they say, follow the money. That's what we're Tell me lead. where it will lead me. If you're lucky, to the real power. If I'm not, ask Willie Boyd. Or his lady friend. Rose Payton is here to see you. Okay, Sundar. You look into that? Thank you. Miss mm -hmm. Payton. I had nowhere else to go, Mr. Hayes. What can I do for you? The prison won't release my brother's body. Well, that's standard procedure. We have to determine whether it was a homicide or not. He was tortured in life. Please, just let him find some peace now. Just say it was a suicide and let me put an end to this. I can't do that yet. What difference does it make if somebody killed him? He's still dead. Let me ask you a question. Has anyone approached you? Approached? What do you mean? Well, the man suspected of killing Roy has ties to organized crime. And I guess I'm wondering if you've been threatened or not. Oh, sorry. Stay. No. No one has approached me. I just want to bury Roy and get on with my life. Is that so difficult? Stan. No, it's not. Let me look into it. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. I uh, followed up on the election angle with these Barclay ledgers that Willie's girlfriend gave us. Here. Take a look at the initials I've marked with the tabs. Looks like several payments over the years. Hmm, payments. M-E-S. Could be anything, right? Person, place, thing. But I called Albany. There are 116 corporations currently doing business in this state with those initials. One of them is called Media Election Services, Inc. And it's located right here in the Apple. Do we know what they do? Not a clue. We've been around since the 60s. Basically, we keep the networks from getting too much aggro on their collective faces. Would you mind explaining that? Sure. You ever wonder how on election night Dan rather flashes his projections and then you... Flip it over to Peter Jennings. He's got the exact same numbers. Network statisticians all took the same classes? <laughs> Computers put statisticians out of work ages ago, Mr. Hayes. Computers use the same software. You're getting warmer. Let me give you, for instance, 1964 California Republican primary. Television networks project victory for Barry Goldwater, while the morning papers pick Nellie Rockefeller. Mm. Somebody screwed up. So? Fourth estate can't have that, Mr. Hayes. Public could lose all confidence in the news media. Then where would we be? So what happens is the biggies all sit down and decide uniformity is the only way to breed public confidence. So you're saying the networks confer before they report results? Mm. That would waste time and money. They use the same computer. That's where we come in. And the networks pay you for the service? So to speak. So to speak. It's pretty spooky. <laughs> it's a matter of public record. We got nothing to hide. Media owns us. Lock, stock, and laptop. And you never receive payments from outside sources? Never happen. At a minimum, it would have the appearance of impropriety. And at a maximum? <laughs> I got a meeting. Joan, I need to speak to Russell Mackey today before he goes to the press.
You've never heard of this. Are you kidding? It would have been a week-long series. Now, I contacted somebody I know who knows somebody who's a biggie at the network news. Okay. What did they tell you? Oh, nothing big. Just that the government granted MES a legal monopoly to count votes. That's a private company, Mike. Monopoly? It makes you feel about two inches, doesn't it? Okay, so what you're saying is the individual counties don't tabulate their own votes? They count them. I mean, you've got to have checks and balances. But the interesting thing is the votes are not tabulated until weeks after the polls close. Now, if those numbers don't agree with MES's numbers and the media, who just happens to own MES, they don't report it, nobody ever knows. And nobody ever checks. Except the Boyd brothers. <laughs> okay, what's so funny? Oh, I have an investigator that thinks I'm having a nervous breakdown over this. <laughs> Look, the investment bank that Willie Boyd worked for, Barclays. Right. They've been slipping big bucks to MES UTT. That's under the table. I got it. Now, you slip enough. Some geek's pinky is going to slip and hit the wrong button on the keyboard. Mikey, the government, hell, the entire country could be hostage to a cabal faceless corporation. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Idiot! Up <laughs> yours! You jerk. You have such a drinking problem, Russell. My God, wait a minute. Do you remember that? That footage on, on George Bush, it ran on TV every day while he was running. I do. You know, the war hero being fished out of the drink I after remember. being shot down. There was something that always bugged me about that. It was shot in color. Meaning? Come on, man. 1944. Who but Frank Capra was shooting color film in 44. Mm -hmm. I just always thought that that was like uh, right place, right time, good for George. What do you think now? Now I think maybe fate got a major kick in the gluteus. Russell. Oh, no. Stay with me. Let's do a what if here. What if this guy was picked for the Oval Office 40 years before he even thought about running? Now, you have to agree, he would owe somebody something big time. Now, play it out, Mike. The media is not just the message. It's the damn reality. Whoa. I'll tell you, this is the kind of story us old pros call a whopper. And you're not going to do anything with it? Eh, don't worry about it, Mike. I'll you're spell not, your name. You're not listening to me. You're not going to touch Russell. The last person that ordered me not to publish was a certain senator from Massachusetts with President Trump. Russell, I'm not ordering you to do anything. I am collecting on 25 years of favors. If the Boyd brothers were killed over this, I want to prove it in court, not in your column. Okay? You serious? I'm serious, Russell. Serious is a heart attack. It's kicking my ass that this could happen in America. Wall Street fixing elections and using a mob to cover his tracks. Eddie, I would think you of all people... What do you people... think about going there, John? I was referring to your suspicious nature. So are we saying the Barclay brothers rigged a congressional election? Well, why stop there? Let's say they put the president in office, too. Hmm. The answer's got to be in the postcard Willie sent to Warren. Answer to what? Connecting the players. I don't know. People, listen to yourselves now. Come on, now. For all we know, this could be a damn bingo card, and we're acting like this is Big Brother zip code. Michael, they're going to laugh you out of court with this one. Won't be the first time. Jenny, would you recap, please? OK. Um. A Wall Street investment bank has been writing checks to the company that tabulates election results for broadcast to the American people. Willie Boyd, who worked for Barclay Brothers, sends his brother Warren an undecipherable postcard before each of their untimely deaths. Homeless, paranoid schizophrenic surfaces as the apparent killer of Warren and is allegedly strangled in the prison shower by one Tommy Cap Rutigliano, a longtime associate of mob boss John Bernero. If we can find a link, we could prove conspiracy. If you add another name, you might be able to. Maddie Wyman. I want to subpoena all her files. Okay? I'm sorry, Miss Wyman's in conference. I can't disturb her. This is a federal subpoena, which means she can and she will be disturbed right now. It's okay, Gwen. Are you in charge, Miss Strauss? Yes, I am. Good for you. Expedited motion to quash your subpoena. Hearings tomorrow, Judge Webster's chamber, 9 a.m. Oh, and uh, thanks for saving me the cost of a process server. Nobody's been indicted, Your Honor. Nobody's been charged with any crime. That will change as soon as I receive the materials I'm looking for. This is a fishing expedition, pure and simple. No, it's harassment, Your Honor, of me and my clients, purely on counsel's whim. 
That whim you are referring to, Your Honor thought was sufficient enough to amount to probable cause. For what? Why don't you explain it for the record, Counselor? Thank you, Your Honor. We believe that Roy Van Wagner was murdered by one Thomas Ritigliano in a federal facility. Miss Wyman represents both men. We feel she may be withholding evidence to motive for said crime. Attorney client privilege, attorney work product. Has Mr. Hayes never heard of these concepts? We further feel that there is an ongoing conspiracy to cover this crime and others. If that is the case, it nullifies privilege. With all due respect, the United States attorney is bootstrapping. He's willing to violate privilege in order to see if privilege can be violated. And is damn good at it, too. I'm going to dismiss defense motion to quash. Your Honor. Hold your horses, Counselor. All documents will be submitted through my clerk with the instructions to redact any items that will violate privilege or any issues not pertinent to the government's investigation. Thank you, Your Honor. Michael, talk about putting a chill on the defense bar. Nice man cometh, Matty. You're implying I'm involved in Van Wagner's murder. Van Wagner, Warren Boyd, that's the beauty of the conspiracy. You're all tied together. I'll have the files sent to Chambers this afternoon. I have afternoon. marshals at your office as we speak. <laughs> you don't trust me at all, do you, Michael? Should I, Matty? What are you all excited about, Maddie? The U.S. attorney sniffing through my files. How's that for starters? Your files, John. Tommy Cap. Is there anything in there connecting either of us to Van Wagner's death? Of course not. So what's the problem? That I am out on a very shaky limb alone. You told me you'd protect me. You told me these people would have all the bases covered. And John Bernero doesn't lie. Especially to his beautiful attorney. So you think we can trust these guys, John? If we can't, I get mad. And you know what happens when I get mad. Now, Eve, you feel better. Relax. Mm. Listen to this. John Bonero owns three trucking companies, an art gallery in Soho, and he's the major shareholder in four publicly traded companies. Michael, we're bigger than U.S. Steel. What do we have? Besides a hernia? Well, Ms. Wyman certainly killed a lot of trees. Paper trail, lawyer's curse. Well, she's either kosher or doing a lot of cleaning up because there's no mention of Van Wagner anywhere. Or either one of the boys. Okay, let's keep looking. Wait a second. All notions of democracy, freedom, choice, free elections are an illusion. Sound familiar? Van Wagner's manifesto. The original handwritten copy. Looks like all 30,000 words. Wyman could have sent a copy to the newspaper to set Van Wagner up. Have her in my office first thing tomorrow morning. Listen to your own advice, Michael. For all we know, this whole election thing is absurd as it sounds. Hmm. But something is not right. Okay. Okay. Do you want to tell me who's really running the country? The Trekkies. <laughs> People in velour shirts. And <laughs> conventions. <laughs> this is really ridiculous. I gotta go. The sitter's probably fast asleep. Is it possible? Is it possible that everything we've been taught is not only wrong, but a carefully constructed lie? Is it possible that everything we hold is fact, history, science, even ourselves, is deception? Is that possible? Wait, wait, wait. Will you spring for an elevator? Oh, Excuse Russell? Me. Caitlin? Caitlin Russell? Hey. Hi. Hi. Um, you gonna be okay? I'm gonna be fine. Good. You? Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Right. Bye. Come on in. No. 
hope I didn't interrupt anything. You got something? Think so. Come here. Now, I've been playing around with that postcard that Willie Boyd sent from Hawaii. Uh-huh. Now, this is what was written on the card, right? Right. I'm thinking to myself, maybe we're focusing in on the wrong thing. Maybe it's not the numbers that are important, but the word. Mm -hmm. So I start doodling around, you know, switching letters and whatnot. The problem is I was never a wizard anagram, so I get nowhere quick. You came across town to tell me you're illiterate? No. I spent the cab fare to tell you that I can count at least up to seven, mm -hmm. which just happens to be the number of letters in the word revisit. So tell me, counselor, what else has a seven? A phone number. Mm -hmm. Bingo. So I start staring at my dial. Whose number is it? Rose Payton, Van Wagner's sister. I never went to law school, but to me, this earns her a visit. Mrs. Payton has been here since I bought the place, 12 years ago. When did she move out? This afternoon. Two hours, she just cleaned out the whole place. I moved down the hall once, took me a week. Did you say where she was going? No. She didn't even take her deposit. Five to two, the post office doesn't have a forwarding address. She set up her brother. End of story, case closed. Damn it, Michael, you might have time to go on a ridiculous scavenger hunt, but I've got a practice to run. If I were you, I would put that in past tense, Maddie. What? I pulled some strings to get a client out of a speeding ticket? Van Wagner's original handwritten manifesto. You should have been a little more thorough. Well, I haven't seen that in a long time. It still doesn't prove anything. It certainly doesn't make me complicit in a homicide. If I were you, I would reread my conspiracy laws, counselor. You son of a bitch. I'm not going away, Maddie. As we speak, there's a federal judge executing a warrant for the Barkley Brothers files. Four people were murdered to cover up rigged elections. I'm going to bring down everyone involved. And if Rose Payton is involved, I'm going to find her and prosecute her. That's a promise. It's business, Michael. Their naivete is their consolation. You're going to take that away from them? Sure. Go ahead. Prosecute me. But I assure you, you've got your claws in the wrong tree. Would you like to call your lawyer now? Oh, is this where it happens? The pancake man flipped me up the daisy chain? Your choice. What happened to you, Maddie? What happened? <sighs> John Bonero, you're under arrest for murder and conspiracy to commit election fraud. Huh? Cut him. I'm from the United States Attorney's Office. This is a search warrant for all your files for the last 10 years. Do you actually think it was luck that bumped you upstairs? They came to me. And they will again. I want the names. Maybe I'll wait for my lawyer this time. Suit yourself. Gentlemen. Madeline Wyman, you're under arrest for election fraud and conspiracy to commit murder. Don't fool yourself, Michael. There's no turning back. Take her. Good afternoon, Mr. Hayes. Tell me about Rose Payton. Gone with the wind. The thing is, I saw this kid on the news. Filled Madison Square Garden with 10,000 dominoes. Tickled the first one ever so slightly. Two hours later, the last one came crashing down. 
There's more? Heart of darkness, my friend. You're not even close. Remember, these people, they don't take hostages. What happens now? That's up to you.